My name is Mariana Fontana. I am a professor of cardiology at the National Medical Center in London, which is part of the University College London. The three cases that were discussed in the correspondence were three very typical cases of presentation of cardiac ATTR and cardiomyopathy. One patient had a uh, um, wild type TTR gene, and two patients that presented the B1 to 2 Y mutation, which is present in up to 4% of patients with Afro Caribbean origin. Uh, the presentation of the patients was entirely typical with history of bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, the main symptoms of presentations were heart failure symptoms. Uh, one of the three patients had also an um, AV conduction problem. So he had to get a um, pacemaker implanted. Uh, so the typical presentation essentially was uh, the most typical and I would say average presentation uh, of any patients with ATTR cardiomyopathy. So a presentation that was absolutely nothing that could have suggested that what we did see happen later. Um, the observation of the antibodies was really through uh, cardiac MRI imaging, which was done follow-up in these patients. So the first patient that was identified was one of the uh, two V1 to 2 patients, and I was reporting the three years follow-up scan. And what I noticed that there was a complete different, uh, uh, complete difference in the myocardial structure, function, and tissue composition. So the amyloid was almost completely gone. Um, and we could see that with legal enhancement as well as extracellular volume, which is the current goal standard to measure the cardiac med load. And then we saw that the changes in the tissue composition, so massive reduction in the cardiac amyloid load, were actually associated with significant changes in the structure and the function. So then I went to look at the ECG. The ECG, the, the voltage on the ECG went up. The echo, the systolic and diastolic function completely changed uh, towards normalization. And also in these patients, I had uh, a three uh, year uh, cardiopulmonary exercise test, and there was a significant improvement in the peak of chain consumption, uh, which was mainly three prevent by an improvement in the overall cardiovascular efficiency. Then the second patient again was identified because it was just reporting a follow up scan, and I noticed exactly the same changes uh, where. Um, there were um, drastic changes in the tissue characterization structure and function. And uh, I did identify the, the third patient just based on the echo imaging, because at that point, uh, I was I knew the pattern of changes in structure and function that uh, I, I should have expected. And so based on the echo at that point, I was able to identify the third patient. But really, the the technique that at the beginning made us realize what was happening was really the cardiac MRI because it's got these unique features of providing information on the myocardial tissue composition as well as structure and function. This was the first proof of concept that ATR cardiomyopathy is a completely reversible condition. So if uh, by using the effective uh, antibody strategy, we can actually target and remove the existing deposits and the heart will go back to normal cardiac structure and function without any scar left. And indeed, that's what we confirmed with cardiac MRI, because with cardiac MRI, we couldn't see, we couldn't see any significant scarring within the myocardium. So it was really the most important finding for me. It was this proof of concept of complete reversibility of the cardiomyopathy, of the ATTR cardiomyopathy, and also the hope that Antibody, antibodies could really um, could really do that because then we went on and discovered that these patients, uh, these three patients, very uniquely had developed anti uh, ATTR antibodies. First, I would like I would like to highlight how we could actually prove the hypothesis uh, that. Uh, it was because of anti-ATTR antibodies uh, that the patients uh, managed to completely remodel at the cardiac level and go back to almost normal structure and function. So the way we proved it is by using uh, um, a unique animal model, which you, which is uh, a mice, uh, which is transgenic for uh, human TTR. So the, the mouse that we used, uh, the animal model that we use is the is the only uh, existing animal model for ATTR amyloidosis at present. Uh, 
And what we did, we take uh, uh, slides from the heart of the mouse, then we put the seed of the patients, and then we put anti-human IgG, and we were able to demonstrate very specific staining for the amyloid deposits. But then, because there was the possibility that actually the antibody was binding to protein attached to the amyloid rather to the amyloid itself, but then what we did, we grew synthetic fibrils in vitro uh, with a trypsin-mediated uh, um, enzymatic mechanism. And uh, and uh, what what we were able to see that there was immunospecific staining only for the misfolded form of the TTR fibrils. So not for the native form, but only for the misfolded form of the TTR fibrils. Then we tested the antibodies also against a wide range of other amyloid type, and we could prove that the antibodies were specific only for the misfolded form of a TTR. When we think about what are the next step, isolation of these uh, unique types of antibodies and sequencing would be an incredible step forward because uh, uh, once we know the sequence uh, of the antibodies, then we could really think about developing those uh, as a potential treatment. L less than a month ago in the New England Journal of Medicine, the phase one results of the neuroimmune trial were published. And uh, the um, the approach used there was uh, uh, in the in that phase one study was to use anti ATCR antibodies that were identified in very early people with no amyloid. And uh, the results were very exciting, but because uh, it was uh, there was some evidence that actually there was a change in the tissue composition as measured by the cardiac MRI, and there was also a significant decline in the temporary are the patients that are treated with a high dose. So I guess at present uh, that is uh, um, the clinical trial, which is which is the compound which is like um, more advanced in terms of drug development. Uh, but there is also another compound which is uh, from the Novonid, Novonodisk, is currently in a phase two. And uh, uh, again, they are testing antibodies against the misfold before of ATTR. Is a larger study because it's a hundred patients uh, with a composite endpoint, uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to see the results of that um, uh, trial as well. So I guess a presence in terms of treatment compounds targeting the existing deposits, it the neuroimmune compound and the novel one are the one that basically hold the greatest promise. Mm -hmm.